Thank you for attending and welcome everybody to the webinar about antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity in our immunology pills mini webinar series. Um, just to mention, so for further or more extensive information, please visit our website or contact your local sales representative. So I will start with a short introduction into the topic of therapeutic antibodies. And there are quite some therapeutic antibodies in different fields on the market, such as inflammatory disease, oncology, cardiovascular disease, or organ transplantation. And of course, especially of importance and interest right now in the field of infectious diseases. And of course, the use of antibodies is not new. It dates back until 1798 to Edward Jenner. So this timeline really nicely highlights the most important milestones. So the second one here it was Paul Ehrlich um, discovering the antigen antibody models. And then later, very crucial, Edelman and Porter discovered the structure of these antibodies. Then in 1990, the first antibodies were engineered, which led to the first antibody in the market, which is rituximab which is an antibody against CD20. And then afterwards, there was a boom resulting in even more antibodies in the market. So next, I will focus on the mode of action. So this slide looks really crowded, but don't worry here. I just want to highlight that the antibodies have different mechanisms of action. And you probably, as I assume you have, you're having an immunology background, know some of them, such as starting here in the left corner, neutralizing different particles or acting via the complement system, or most importantly, lately, by specific antibodies or checkpoint inhibitors. But in this webinar today, we are looking at this part where the antibodies are able to recruit effector cells, such as NK cells, macrophages, or even T cells, depending on the setting. And today, the NK cells will be in the focus. So how can we measure the mode of action for antibodies? I put this just to highlight, as in today's previous webinar, we also addressed um, MLR, so the mixed lymphocyte reaction. But as mentioned before, we focus today on the ADCC. And here you can see the basic concept. So starting here on the left-hand side, we have antibodies that you can either produce yourself, so human B cells producing these antibodies, or you can recombinantly make them. And these antibodies then recognize a specific antigen, and this antigen could be expressed, for example, by malignant cells. Then the NK cells can recognize via the CD16 receptor the FC part of the cell-bound antibodies, as depicted here. And whenever this happens, these NK cells are able to trigger degranulation, and they actually use granzymes, perforin, or other cytokines, and by this are able to kill their target cells. Therefore, this is a very important assay to verify if the antibody of interest is working or in another context, whether it is enhancing NK cell activity. So next, I will dive into the assay and how to isolate, expand, and analyze the NK cells. Now, what are the challenges regarding the NK cell isolation, first of all? Whenever you're working with any type of cell, you might have especially with regards to NK cells, the fear that uh, you activate your cells by the cell isolation or you get contamination or you might have very low volumes, for example, of your starting material and worrying about having to do everything manually. So in the next slides, I want to present our solutions here at Multini Biotech. So we have different ways, first of all, to separate NK cells. Here shown on the left side, you can see isolation, free isolation of PBMCs with the density gradient centrifugation and then the specific isolation of NK cells. This can be done either with CD56 microbeads or with a um, NK cell isolation kit. So either with a positive or with an untouched isolation. As shown here on the right side, um, you can also start directly from your starting material, so from different blood products, for example, whole blood samples, buffy coat, or leukophoresis products. For this, you can use the new products straight from microbeads or the uh, Max Express, also for positive and untouched isolation of your NK cells. And I will show you some examples for the new technology. So, here, just very briefly, the advantages are of course that you do not need to do density gradient. You can also skip some washing steps 
and counting steps, meaning that you really speed up your cell isolation and get your cells of interest in around half an hour. And you can semi-automate this with the Multimax Cell 24 separator to even make the cell separation faster and easier. Here I have an example comparing a positive and an untouched isolation approach. So here in the upper row, you see NK cells that were isolated with the buffy code straight from CD56 microbeads positively. And then down here, you can see an example where first the PBMCs were isolated and then the NK cell isolation kit was used to isolate the NK cells in an untouched manner. Probably this is the kit that most of you know from Milton Biotech. And when using this kit, you get a very pure CD56 positive NK cell population, which is not activated, as you can see here, shown with the marker CD69 and CD25 on the NK cells. But if you're using the CD56 microbeads, of course, you have a mixture of NK cells and NKT cells, as it is a positive approach and isolating all cells that are CD56 positive. However, what I want to highlight here is that even though you have the NKT cells, but there is no activation of the NK cells with a positive approach as compared to the untouched approach. So CD25 and CD69 expression is similar. So just to keep in mind that when you're using straight from microbeads, you're saving time as you can skip washes and performing fry call and your purity and recovery are similar or even compared to doing a density gradient centrifugation. And another important challenge you might consider is that you have the NKT cells uh, in your assay. However, remember that for the ADCC, CD16 is responsible to recognize the FC region of the antibodies bound to the cancer cells. So here we can observe in two donors where the cells were isolated with the Buffy code straight from CD56 microbeads. We can look at the NK cells and the NKT cells, and you can nicely see here on the y-axis, the CD16 expression, that the NK cells are CD16 positive, whereas the NK cells only express CD16 to a minimal level. So by this, you can assume that the NKT cells, which do not highly express CD16, should not interfere with your ADCC assay. Here, I just want to mention how you can get your cells absolutely fast in a semi-automated process using the Multimax Cell24. You can use it to isolate your cells directly from whole blood buffy code or leukopack. So this is saving you a lot of time. Of course, now the next challenge after isolating of the NK cells is the expansion of the cells. Specifically for this assay, usually you would not need to expand the cells. You probably just need an overnight incubation with interleukin-2. However, I'm anyways showing you what you can do with our NK Max media. Um, so you can either expand your cells for two to three weeks or just do an overnight incubation. And it has some major advantages as you get more in NK cells, uh, as they preferentially expand, you get less T cells and the cytotoxic function of the NK cells is preserved. What is just important is that uh, AB0 needs to be added for reaching optimal results. So just to emphasize, if you do not know our NK media yet, make sure to check out these publications. Um, these are some with NK cells, but also with CAR NK cell expansion. So now, once you have your NK cells, they are isolated and expanded or activated overnight, the NK cells are incubated with the target cells. A very common control can be seen here on the left side with the cell line K562 that is prone to NK cell killing. Here we tested both positively isolated cells with a spread from CD56 microbeads and an untouched isolation with the NK cell isolation kit. In both cases, NK cells are able to efficiently kill the K562 cells in a standard four hour killing assay. To test the antibodies of interest, here now on the right side, the target cells are first incubated with the antibody of interest. In this case, we use Rituximab, which recognizes CD20. And then using two different effector to target cell ratios, one to one and five to one. Uh, and the NK cells isolated with uh, either straight from or the untouched approach. And then they were compared using different concentrations of rituximab. Both approaches performed similar and thus confirming that the NKT cells did not affect the ADCC. And by increasing antibody concentration, the saturation could be detected. 
you can perform the readout by flow cytometric analysis. And here you encounter other challenges such as background and the complex staining of the NK cells. But we provide you with everything that you need to perform the flow stainings. So you have here antibodies shown in the table, the clones and also the order number in case you are interested. And these are all reaffinity antibodies. If you're not familiar with them, just a very brief overview. They have a mutated FC region, so they lack binding to the FC receptor, so there's no background. And there's only one universal IgG isotype. So you do not need to worry about IgG1 mouse, IgG1 rabbit. It is just one needed. And not only that, we even have more to offer. And these are ready to use panels. And in case you're interested in analyzing other markers, shown here as example, uh, in case you're interested in memory like in case cells, for example, these panels are already established and you do not need to spend time to do this on your own. And in addition, if you want to detect up to 12 human cytokines from just one sample, you definitely have to have a trivisimax plex cytokine kit. So with just 550 microliters that you get from your sample, you can get information about the secreted cytokines. And in combination with the express modes and the max quant, the max flex cytokine kits are optimized for automated measurements and simplifying flow cytometric analysis, as there are predefined experiment settings, as well as acquisition and analysis templates. Here's just one example of having the NK cells activated with either IL-2 alone or IL-2 together with SAGIT. And you can see that certain cytokines, such as in this case TNF, GM, CSF, and interferon gamma, are upregulated upon target cell encounter. And you can analyze all these 12 markers within one sample. So to summarize, there is a complete ADCC workflow that we offer. And so starting with your sample, either whole blood buffy code or leukophoresis products, you can use the straight from microbeads or first isolate PBMCs, and then use the NK cell isolation kit. Then you can use our medium and cytokines to either only activate or expand your NK cells. And for the ADCC assay, you can compare the NK cell activity with your antibody of interest and without as control. And thus you can identify the lead candidate, the antibody that most efficiently induces NK cell mediated target cell killing. And you can measure this with a flow cytometric based readout. So to sum up, we have a very nice application note, but just for you to remember, as I have shown, you can use a positive uh, isolation. It doesn't interfere with the assay. And please test it yourself if you have any doubts. And if you want to get some feedback, I'm also very happy to hear from you as well. We have the NK max medium to culture the NK cells, also in combination with the cytokines, which is then the perfect tool to expand the cells. And at the end, uh, you can get more and more data using the MaxPlex cytokine kits to analyze multiple cytokines at the same time. So everything that you need is in one place. And last but not least, if you want to get a detailed application protocol, so exactly how we performed the ADCC assay, such as incubation times and cytokines, you can ask your local Milton sales consultant. So this is my last slide and would like to thank you for your attention.